Hi guys, welcome to day two of the Ecom Build. We are have just received the battery so we can now do all the electrics, finish off the handlebars and get the rest of the bike done. Should be a good day, we're hopefully we'll be able to test ride at the end of today, but if not, it'll be in the next episode. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, behind here is a clamping bolt to clamp these to the bars. And when it comes to the grips, you do this Allen key up there when it's on the bars and that clamps expands on the inside and clamps the bar down. Okay, so I'm just gonna fit to the front brake cable, which these down to here, into the um, front brake. It doesn't have to be tight, I'm just going to get it in position and we'll tighten it up already once the bike's rolling. Okay, so here is our battery holder, a lock holder. So we're going to attach this lock onto there and then thread this cable under the, um, under the seat and out to the top. Okay, so we're going to lower battery lock onto the bottom of the um, frame and have this wire coming up like that. Okay, so when you put the, uh, the battery lock inside the frame, you want to test fit it using the battery. Okay, so as you can see, here's our bracket to hold on the battery lock. So we're gonna put it underneath. I've slotted the battery in, as you can see, we've slotted into the lock itself. And I'm going to make sure it um, lines up all right there. And bolt it down nice and snug, just so it holds the battery in place. Okay, now our battery lock is in place. It's important to make sure the root of the table, the cable goes round to the right, ready to connect onto the under seat tray. So now we've stuck the 3M tape on here, we're going to attach this where these two screws are and then feed the cables through and down through there. Next step, we're going to remove this yellow cover here and attach this earth wire into the center connector. Okay, so the next step is we're going to attach the keyless ignition to the back of the, um, the seat tray and all the electric housing unit and then we're going to thread the two cables under here going back towards the yellow connecting box here. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to fit the controller into the controller bracket so around 180 degrees round like that. So these these black cables are going to come around the side like that. Green, yellow and blue cable will go underneath the control axle and these power cables will go over the top. So now we're going to bolt the controller onto the controller bracket here using these screws. Okay, so the next step is we're going to put the uh, control unit and the control bracket here on the frame using the spaces to go between the, uh, uh, the control unit bracket and the frame itself. So we're just going to leave this dangling here for now. We're going to thread these black and red cables up through the um, frame to the, uh, the top seat unit up there. Okay, so now we're gonna thread our black and red cable up through the frame. Then we're gonna attach it, the black one to the center point here, like that, and then the red one to there as well. These two uh, connectors we threaded through under this black box earlier that have come from the wireless ignition switch. Um, they need to go on one, the black one on the center, like so and the red one on the lower one. So we're gonna thread our orange and black wires around the back of the um, wireless ignition unit. Orange wire round over the top of this unit into here. And the earth wire coming out the back of that unit there needs to travel round here along the bottom and then into the black following along with the other earth on that green unit there. Okay, so normally we'll have the uh, tail light fitted somewhere like like that on the back on that rear tray but we've had the uh, rear fender of this bike cut down from the rear tail so we're not going to run the tail light the tail light will be down on the side here and because we don't have this tail light we can't fit the indicator we're going to have the indicator cables running up underneath with the wheel arch and into the side of the frame there but for the time being we're going to leave these off and we'll leave these in place but they won't have any indicators until we get some smaller ones fitted somewhere on the rear of the frame Okay, so the next step is we're going to put, fit the uh, battery lock cable. Okay, so before continuing, we're going to slide the battery in and make sure it locks and unlocks correctly. Okay. 
So our cable wasn't routed correctly, so we've now routed it. I'm gonna try it once more. So it's one of those things you've just got to wiggle till it seems right, and you can see that that point there is in the lock position. And as you can see there, when I turn the key, it will then move to the unlock position and then back to the lock position. Locked. Okay, so due to the fact we have wider forks on this uh, cub, we are going to have to make another bracket for our headlight. So for the time being, we've cut the headlight wire off and we've just threaded it through to hold it in place. Same with the indicators, which will all be fitted at some point. And then we'll allow us to plug it all into the unit and we'll have these sitting up here or tucked away for the time being until we get a headlight fitted. Okay, so earlier on in the video, we had an issue with the rear brake caliper not lining up. So what we did, we undid these and just literally moved it out a little bit. We didn't realize there was adjustment on these bracket points here. Just so you're aware, easy as that. Just loosen those off, move the caliper to the position you're happy with, and then lock it back up. Okay, so the next step is we've got to route these cables, the uh, electric motor cables and the uh, rear brake line along the behind the swing arm using these P-clips here. And once we've done that, we'll nip them all up, make sure it's safe, and then we'll move on to connecting all the electricals and the cables themselves. Okay, so our next step is to thread the, all the motor cables and the rear brake cable line in the hole here above the control unit. So it avoids the rear wheel. Okay, so next step is we are going to thread the cables through this uh, rubber grommet, and that is then going to sit in the frame like that to protect the wires from chafing against here. Uh, so yeah, we've also got a thread through the um, brake line through this as well and take that up to the top of the handlebars to connect with the, uh, the brake master itself. Okay, so we've got this shielding here which we're going to use to tidy up the cables. Rather than having a big web of that, we're going to put this through and tidy up. Okay, so here's our rear brake cable feeding through along our loom. It's come to get to here. We are now going to connect it to our rear brake lever. First thing we've got to do is remove this cap Take the metal bit that's there and reattach it on this cap here. Okay, so first thing we need to do, oh, I forgot this step, is put this little plastic cap over the top of this. Uh, and then we're gonna put this little bolt over the top and then put the little metal piece that is in the same bag as this plastic bit over the top of there, like that. Now that is going to hold it all in place. And we put it in here. Okay, now our rear brake is working correctly. For our next step, we are going to thread cable number five, cable number 16, and cable number eight up through the left-hand side of the bike to the top. So that's how it'll be on the inside. Okay, next step is to get all your handlebar wires that are coming out of your loom here. It's coming out of this stretch here. And then plug them all in first, best you can. Uh, using the um, colours and number numbers associated with each wire. Okay, so we've positioned all our wires nice and tucked up underneath, leaving these six wires hanging out ready to be connected together and allow us to move up here and now connect our battery lead. This is the lead that connects on top of the battery. And we're gonna connect these two wires like that. We're gonna start by putting our main power, twisting these two wires together to make them one and then undoing this and putting them in at the top in the top section of this green connector and then we've already put the earth which came around from the yellow box on the other side we're going to then put in this second earth in that same slot with it okay there you go there's our two earths in place and we're finally going to put this last positive with the fuse or in line with it in the bottom hole down there Okay, so now we've got the top unit all done. We're gonna lower it back down into the bike, making sure none of these lovely connectors get caught. We'll be able to lower it into the bike. Seems to work best front first. Okay, so now I've done these connectors and connected them together. Uh, the bike is ready to turn on and see how it goes. We've got to make sure everything lights up and works. And then we'll assemble everything, button it all together and take it for a test drive. Okay, now grab your battery slide it in, make sure it drops in nice and firmly and locks in place. Now you're ready to connect the battery up and see if she uh, starts. Okay. 
So she works, she runs, she turns on. Now time to button everything together and get it all ready to go. Uh, before you do that, make sure you take out the battery. You don't want to get an electric shock. Next, I'm going to attach the foot pegs. They go under here, there's four holes for it. And you also need to remove this nut and slide this onto there. Next thing I'm going to do is attach the side stand like that. And then I'm going to put, use this bolt and this nut to go through it. And use one of these springs to attach onto there. Okay, next thing we're going to do is secure the seat. Here's our seat adapter to go on there. This then sits on top of that. And then you put the bolts through both holes. And then attach the two other bolts at the back here. to pull everything into place. Okay, there you go. There is our Honda Cub finished and done. Apart from the tail light and the headlight and indicators, which will come later, Dan's going to modify something up and make it all look nice. We're excited to show you this. We'll take it for a test drive tomorrow. But there you go, it's turned out really good. It wasn't too difficult for someone who's never done one before. It took us a bit of time. We had to work out some little issues we had along the way, but it's all turned out pretty good and we're pretty happy with how it is. Just want to say thank you to Nathan for my help. So yeah, thanks for watching the Follow Motorcycles Workshop. Hopefully we'll do a lot more videos like this in the future. And yeah, thanks a lot guys, we'll see you soon.